Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, fascinating stuff. First up, Filecoin token, which was just listed this morning, sees a almost 300% increase in a day as Gemini Kraken announced the listing. Now we're gonna take a look at what happened in a very short amount of time, and it's going to blow your mind also. Next up, Polkadot's tokenized Bitcoin wants to bring DeFi beyond Ethereum. And I need to take a look at exactly what was wrapped Bitcoin and what it could potentially be and do. Next up, Bitcoin is getting two major improvements in historic code update. And if you know anything about Bitcoin, it rarely does this. So this is kind of like a big milestone. And finally, how much Bitcoin does it take to break into the 1% club? And we're gonna look at different theories about what it could be. Some people say it's 0.28. Some people say it's up to 15. And why I'm gonna tell you, they're all wrong. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today it is Thursday, October 15th. 15th, almost 1 p.m. Texas time. And what do we got? Well, Bitcoin is almost at 11.5, so not too bad at 1.6%. It's up though 7.5 almost, or more than that, for the seven day period. So I'll take those numbers. Ethereum, 377. I'm hoping to see a breakthrough at 400, but we will see. However, it is up 10% for the week, so I'll take that W. Uh, Tether's Tether, XRP, watch out, 0.2%. Bitcoin Cash, 3.7% up. And remember, Bitcoin Cash is going to do a hard fork pretty soon. I think it's November. Uh, so you could potentially have a, a big little windfall on your hands. But uh, just be aware that a lot of the things that have forked off of Bitcoin uh, didn't do so hot. So this, again, is a fork of a fork. Uh, if I had to put money on, on anything, it would probably just be Bitcoin Cash. Binance Coin up 2.7, which is great. Congratulations to all you big Binance Coin holders. Chainlink up 20% for the week and only 0.8 for today. But hey, I'll take that win again. Polkadot, Cardano, Litecoin, Bitcoin SV, everything's up. This is a pretty good day. Not that it's up massively, but just a little bit of a stride and we will take it. And what's up big time? Uh, Filecoin. Filecoin is up 101%. And if you notice, it's in a 24 hour time frame. And then of course the seven day, there's nothing there because this is the first couple hours it's actually been listed and it's sitting at around 60 bucks right now as we see it so let's break into the top story because this to me is fascinating actually before we get into that, that file coin i want to share with you uh this video it was fantastic it was from cj uh he had shared this and he's over there at market rebellion and it's it's actually uh peter lynch and he's talking about when do you sell now obviously he's not talking about uh, cryptocurrencies but it's sage advice and it's interesting to see that uh you know one of the big players uh was wrong multiple multiple times and uh, really goes and talks about hey just be an investor so take a listen funny in the stock all you can lose is 100 percent i've done that and your great mistakes are selling a good company and that doubles then it triples and quadruples because you make a lot of mistakes and so it's ones that go up tenfold i call them the 10 baggers so some of my mistakes are saying oh my god this stock is too high and i was wrong and you had to figure out what inning am I in this baseball game? I sold Toys R Us way too early. It went up 20 fold after I sold. I did the same thing at Home Depot. Those are probably my two greatest mistakes I ever made. When should you sell? Well, you ought to find out why you bought a stock. If you're saying it's a cyclical company and they're doing poorly and they're doing awful, you wait till things are getting better and they're doing terrific and then you sell it. But with a growth company, you have to say, Walmart's case, 10 years after they went public, you could have bought the stock and made 500 times your money. You say, still are only in 15% of the United States. And you could, they could say, why can't they go to 17? Why can't they go to 19? Why can't they go to 23? So for the next four decades, they went around the country. So you have to say to yourself, in this stock, I have a 10-year story, a 20-year story. I'll be able to write that down and follow that. That's what I do with the company. And that's your decision. That's how you sell it. No, I, you still buy a company, and you buy a company to grow. And if it's a textile company or it's an electronics company, a software company, you better understand what they do. And, and if they do well, the stock will do well, no matter what happens to the market. If the Dow Jones today was 1,000, or 500, you would have made a lot of money in McDonald's. You would have made a lot of money in Johnson Johnson. You would have made a lot of money in Gillette. These companies' earnings have gone up a lot the last 30 years. And if the market was 50,000, you would have lost money in Burlington Industries. I recommended that in 1969. I think it's, I think it's gone from 34 to 2 with no stock splits. These earnings have been terrible. Well, your modesty actually makes an important point, which is people with the best batting averages in the world don't bat a thousand. I sometimes get angry mail, particularly in bear markets, saying so and so recommended such and such, and it went down. Yeah. Well, uh, how often did you come up with a clinker? Well, this this is a funny business. You don't have to be right even five times out of ten. If the times you're right, you make a double and triple. It offsets all those times you lose twenty or thirty percent. So when you buy a stock, you say to yourself, "How much can I lose, and how much can I make?" And you ought to be able to make a lot. So again, the investments that you make, are they 
symmetrical or asymmetrical? I can tell you right now, in my opinion, cryptocurrency digital assets are a vastly asymmetrical investment. The downside is, yeah, you could lose a lot of your money, uh, but the upside is tremendous. So those are just my thoughts. Now let's uh, go back to the big article. So what's going on? There's a thing called File and it's blowing up. So here's what we got. Filecoin is basically a distributed storage network based on a blockchain mechanism. Unlike proof of work, Filecoin leverages proof of storage itself. In short, the miner's power is in the consensus protocol is proportional to the amount of storage it provides. And you really gotta think about, well, what does it do? What is this? What is the whole purpose of this? And it was kind of questioned by crypto personality John Carvalho. I don't know who that is. He asked if uh, anyone could articulate the need for the token for the purpose of cloud storage. And it's a good point. Like, I mean, if there's cloud storage, there's cloud storage everywhere, right? Uh, Amazon Web Services, Amazon does that. Android services for your phone, uh, the iPhone as well, and the iCloud. I mean, every place has cloud storage, so why we need this? Well, think about it this way. Where do they store this information? Well, it's on servers, and it's in these huge warehouses where they have to either buy the space or rent the space. Then the servers themselves, uh, which they have to also purchase, which will run down because that's massive overhead. You can make a lot of money, I'm sure, and but uh, it's kind of, if you really look at it, kind of inefficient. But what if you could use the resources that are in everybody's computers or everybody's phones or wherever else it is? And this is how I see it. If you're able to use unused storage, so people can store their pictures and data and things like that. Uh, that seems like a better proposition and probably a cheaper way to do things than by having a centralized server, which is super high cost. So that's how I see Filecoin. And I have to say that Filecoin sounds super boring, but uh, today it was anything but. But going back in history, Filecoin event marks one of the most highly anticipated launches in the industry. And rather than waiting for the network and its token to go live, several exchanges hopped on to list the coin, which is kind of funny how some of these exchanges, they're really staunch, like, well, we can't list this one because it doesn't have a mainnet. Well, <laughs> didn't seem to matter here because even for the launch of the mainnet, Filecoin noted an increase of a whopping 270%. Over the last 24 hours, according to Coin Market Cap, or as I call it, Binance Cap, because that's who owns it. At the time of writing, the token was priced at 110 bucks, and it held a market cap of about 24 hours of trading volume. So, what really is going on can be just summed up in this chart. <laughs> Look at this nonsense. So, trading went live at 8:30 Eastern time. Uh, looks like it started off at around somewhere around 30 bucks. Okay, so when you get in there. I mean, you could have just got in early, like, hey, here it is, you know, here's my 30 bucks. And then you see this like, oh, 31, it's going up. And then boom, it goes down. 28, I'm losing, I got to sell. And then of course, what happens? Wa -da -da, da -da -da -da, $97. And then what happens? 94, not too bad. And then it hits this big peak. And at this point, this is where everybody uh, kind of goes wrong sometimes. Uh, they go, wow, uh, it started off here. I got in here. I'm going to 105. It's never going down. I'm the best trader of all time. I'm a super genius. Everybody look at me. <laughs> that's, and here's the thing. That's exactly what I thought in 2017 during the parabolic bull run. And uh, look how that turned out. So in 2018, everything crashed down. It's the same thing here. And if you ever meet a person who says, I can time the top, run away because they are full of it. And, and this is a, is a pretty good case. So you have 105. I'm hoping people sold. And it looks like a lot of people did because this is exactly what happened. 95, 86, 84, 72, 68, 63, and down we go to 55, 81. However, you have to understand, I mean, even if you're at 30, I mean, what is that? That's like, uh, you know, 50% gain or somewhere around there, 60%. You're still up pretty well. Where will it actually end up uh, at the end of the day? Who knows? But the big thing is don't chase shiny objects as much as you can. Look at the team look at what it does. Do you believe in the project? Do you believe it's going to be there for a long time? Now you can trade. And I'm sure this was pretty fun if you did it, you know, just like, Hey, I'm going to time it, time it. And now nah, whatever you want to do, but I don't really like to do that too much. A lot of stress for me. I got other stuff going on. So I just invest. I'm not going to invest in, in, in Filecoin per se, but I just thought it was an interesting, uh, example of uh, how things can go a little bit crazy in the crypto world and this isn't the first and it's not the last but let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, let's move on